pulse width modulation is a method of reducing the average power delivered by an electrical signal by effectively chopping into discrete parts. The average value of the voltage and current fed to the load is controlled by turning the switch between the supply and the load on and off at a fast rate. The longer the switch is on as compared to off, the higher the total power supplied to the load. This is to say that the laser is turned on and off rapidly. The reason for the percent is how often the laser is on versus off. Now, so if we give it 50% on and 50% off, that's 50% power. So if we're at 13%, it's 13% of the time on, rest of the time off. On K40s, most of this is controlled with the knob, and you only need to excite the plasma in your tube so much. And the tubes can't cope with 100% power on all the time. Devices with PWM control can change this percent on the fly, at least with a couple safety range restrictions. This provides some ability to have real 3D designs since you can burn each color of gray in a raster to a different depth. The M2 Nano has this hooked to a knob and doesn't control it with the board. So the only on and off it has is turning the laser on and off as it moves around. Now PPI is pulses per inch, and this is different. It's not an on and off as a product of time, but distance. The K40s typically have one mil stepper motor, so the thousand units of distance with a thousand pulses means on all the time, never off. Keep in mind the PWM is still controlled by the knob and we still need the safety restrictions to protect the tube, so do not count on PPI to protect your tube. It might provide some protection, but I can't say how much, so assume it provides none. We're basically writing raw byte code to the M2, so we do a car error carry forward algorithm. So we match perfectly with the PPI value that we're given. So 500 PPI would carry forward 500 to our counter. That's not less than 1,000, so the pulse is uh, off. Then next we add 500, which brings us to 1,000, which hits our threshold, and we fire the laser. So it goes on, off, on, off, on, off. If we set our PPI to 400, it'll go off, off, on, off, on, off, off, on, off, on. It'll pattern our pulses to be precisely 40% of the time. The above diagram shows an early test of an SVG curves example at 1,500, 250, and 125 PPI. Now this gives the power modulation some different properties that are worth addressing. We are depending on the distance and not the speed. So if we're drawing a line at 25 millimeters a second, this is about an inch a second. So at 500 PPI, we'll pulse about 500 times a second. At 50 millimeters a second, which is about two inches a second, at 500 PPI, we'll pulse about a thousand times a second. So if we did PWM modulation here, either with a board that can control it or with the knob, we'd be changing the ratio of the on time versus off time. So we'd reduce our laser linearly with regards to time, but irrespective of the distance. The amount of power being sent from your laser to the material is heat impact. It is how much power does an area of the material absorb. If we increase our speed by 2x, the amount of laser that hits any specific area is cut in half because the amount of time that laser is over that area is half the time. Another example of this effect is if we increase our scan line distance, also called scan gap and raster step distance, we usually increase the width by that factor and step down to the next scan line by a different amount, leaving the amount of scan lines the same. This means that if we increase the raster step from two to four, we get wider by a factor of two and our height increases by a factor of two, but our scan lines only get twice as wide. There's still the same number of them. So our resulting raster will get half the overall impact and we'll see them about half as light. If we slow our speed to 50% in this raster, the heat impact will double and we'll get roughly the same lasering per unit of area. I did at times say half as light for half laser impact. This depends a lot on the material and how it ablates and burns and vaporizes and melts. So take that with a grain of salt and an understanding of the art of knowing your material. Now with our background in laser heat math, how does this relate? How does PBI relate to heat impact? And the answer is directly. It's exactly linear. 500 is exactly half the heat impact of 1000, regardless of your speed or your knob setting. PWM, whether controlled by your board or your knob, is percent laser power. If the power is half, it would be about half the heat impact. Though lasers don't really fire linear with the amount of power you send them, and don't fire at the low end and break your tube at the high end, 
PPI is entirely linear, so you can use it to lightly engrave paper. Though at the low end here, rather than stop firing the laser, you'll start seeing the dots. Rather than something that looks consistent, you'll get little uh, pips across. For audio files out there, know that PWM is the ratio on off, but this switch can happen at any speed. So lasers have a frequency like you'd find in audio tones. The PPI would be like the beats where the tone as a whole is turned off and on but entirely depends on the speed of the laser head. The faster the speed, the faster the beats. Where PWM is more like the tone of the note, your lasering can and does have both of these. But the important thing is how many photons are striking your material over particular areas, how these different power settings affects that, and how your material reacts to that many photons. But code-wise, Meerkat is just intended to give you the tools it can which in this case is a bit of programmable PPI, since the board doesn't give you access to anything else. This should give you an overview of the power settings, the type of power settings, and how Meerkat works in regards to those. Thanks for watching.